And now I got another one. Definitely using rabbits. In August 2019, Carrie Teal, the executive director for the animal rights group Gray 2K, logged onto his computer and found a message waiting for him on Facebook. What was your reaction when you got that message? We receive confidential tips all the time and sometimes uh, they turn out to be accurate, sometimes they don't. Teal and Gray 2K were behind the 2018 constitutional amendment in Florida to end Greyhound racing in the state by next year. Jacks is Greyhound industry slang for jackrabbits, and it refers to the banned practice of training young Greyhounds to race by getting them at first to chase live jackrabbits. It is also known as live lure training and coursing. The idea is that in order for them to eventually chase the mechanical rabbit around the track, they first need to literally develop a taste of what it is they are chasing. In 1978, during the premiere episode of the ABC News Magazine 2020, a young Geraldo Rivera brought the cruelty of coursing and live lore training into the American living room. Our 2020 investigation has found that coursing is a common practice among most greyhound owners, training their dogs on live bait, wild jackrabbits. The jackrabbit's good for nothing. We do not think it's a senseless killing. Geraldo took the video from the coursing event in Kansas and played it for then Kansas Senator Bob Dole. Well, I proposed, uh, in fact, uh, today that we uh, outlaw public coursing. You view it for a second or a minute or an hour, it's an act of inhumanity, cruelty, and it ought to be stopped. The 2020 anchors seem skeptical. Geraldo, do you really think there's going to be legislation growing out of this? I hope so. Congress, of course, has a lot of more profound things to consider, but this is one of those petty barbarisms. I hope they get around to passing the law. Turns out the 2020 anchors were right to have their doubts. The bill introduced by Dole and another even stricter bill introduced by Indiana Senator Birch Bayh were never passed. When Geraldo Rivera exposed uh, how, how cruel and barbaric live lure training is, uh, the industry was, was embarrassed. They, they were publicly shamed and uh, it claimed that it was going to clean up it, the mess and, and prevent this from happening again. After the 2020 news scandal, the National Greyhound Association prohibited the use of live jackrabbits to train greyhounds. But in reality, Teal claims, the practice didn't go away. It simply went underground. We have repeatedly received uh, confidential tips that live lure training not only still occurred, but was commonplace. Over the years, however, leads dried up, insiders fell silent, and they were left chasing a ghost. Then came last year's Facebook message. Teal thought this might be the break they've been waiting for. He offered specific locations, providing Google Maps, outlining how the training facility was set up in Oklahoma. Not only did he claim that all of the dogs that went through his farm had been live lure trained. He claimed that he had done it himself. Teal knew what he needed to do next. Well, at that point, uh, we reached out to, to Pete. I know it's coming up soon. In the animal rights world, Pete Paxson is a legend, a modern day Upton Sinclair, exposing industries that profit from the mistreatment of animals. Over the past 20 years, he has gone undercover in slaughterhouses, puppy mills, and hog farms, documenting animal cruelty. He has legally changed his name three times, and his face is plastered on websites, warning employers not to hire him if he applies for a job. 
I have worked undercover on virtually every type of factory farm and slaughterhouse that you can name. I have investigated um, animal cruelty in the U.S., Mexico, Canada, Brazil, India. Can't imagine that this is an endeavor that makes you rich. No, 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 no. I, I don't do it for the money. I work for nonprofits. I just do it because I just love the work. Paxton had also heard the rumors about live or training over the years. I went to a lot of breeders and everybody would say, no, nope, nobody does that anymore. Maybe they used to, but not anymore. It's a myth, you know, is what people tried to say. And then Grace UK got some very specific intel that there's, you know, this target in Kyoto, Oklahoma. All I had to do was go out there and figure out how do I get eyes on that location to, to verify this. In early March, Paxson arrived in Kyoto. Population, 549. The first thing I noticed was, I have no idea how the hell I'm gonna be able to see what it is that they're doing. There's an area where they're training these dogs, and it's hidden from view. It's right off a street corner, but it's hidden from view, surrounded by trees on all sides. Paxson worked his way around the property and was eventually able to find a spot in the trees about 800 feet from the training site. On the morning of March 3rd, he set up his high-powered video cameras in the bushes along the tree line and waited. I put myself in position, I'm prepared to wait all day. Within 45 minutes, boom, you know, the two, two trucks pull in and they're pulling trailers of greyhounds. So I know that this is gonna go down. And they move past that dirt oval completely and they start going out into the field. So I have to reposition myself, set up in some bushes, and then I see them the trailers of dogs next to this dirt field. And they have these wooden boxes on the back of the trailers, which is exactly what Gray 2K described as being used to hold wild rabbits. And without hesitation, uh, three men uh, get out and they start, they open up cages and they, they start pulling dogs by their collars. They just drag them over and they put them into these metal boxes with gates on the front as a starting gate. And they, they put three or four dogs in there, generally four dogs at a time. And then they reach into a wooden box and pull out a rabbit by the hind legs. And the rabbit's kicking and spinning. And then they would hold the rabbit in front of the dogs to get the dogs worked up and then let the rabbit go. And the rabbit would take off in a panic. And this little dirt patch had a, just nothing but a chain link fence around. And the dogs would come out of their gate and shoot out. And with no rhyme or reason, some dogs would be muzzled, some weren't. And they would either pin the rabbit on the ground or the, or the rabbit would get stuck against the fence trying to squeeze through a hole of the chain link fence. There was no escape. Time after time, a new set of dogs would be released and another jackrabbit would be torn to death. One of the worst things that I've seen is that one of the men would go up to the rabbit and he would take a rope, tie it around the rabbit's legs or midsection and drag the rabbit on the ground. And I could see that even if the rabbit was bloody or the dogs had already pushed the rabbit down, the rabbit would start bouncing and he would start spinning the rope around his head to entice the dogs to finish the rabbit off. And part of how I knew the rabbit was alive was that I could, from 800 feet away, I could hear the rabbit screaming. There's not a lot that makes me grit my teeth when I see it, but this was one of them. And, and, and part of the reason it was so tough for me to watch wasn't just that the rabbit was suffering, it was the sheer joy that these men had for what they were doing. And they would drag the rabbit back to the area of the trucks and what would happen then? Once the dogs had completely killed the rabbit, they would just throw the rabbit in a pile and then the bodies would pile up. It was rabbit after rabbit after rabbit. And the pile would just grow and get bigger and bigger until they had no rabbits left in their boxes to use. Gray 2K provided CBS Miami with all the raw video packs and shot for us to review and use as we saw fit in our story. The same video was also provided to law enforcement in multiple states. In the field, Paxton took copious notes, jotting down license plate numbers for all of the vehicles, descriptions of the men. He brought along the local paper to make it clear what day he was shooting the video and recorded the GPS map on his phone to verify the location. When the men finally finished and drove off, Paxton emerged from his hiding place. I packed up the gear, walked through the woods to head back to my vehicle, and uh, 
you know, I told, I called um, Kerry Teal with Gray 2K and said, man, you know, I got it. And he just said, well, yeah, we knew that. We, we, we knew that that's what was happening this whole time. The first time a former Greyhound trainer came to me and said, not only is this happening, all the dogs or virtually all the dogs are being live lure trained. I was skeptical. The second time someone came to me and said that, I was skeptical. I'm no longer skeptical. I think the, the, the facts in this case show that it is very likely this is a widespread pet practice involving a large number of dogs. Tio argued the Kyoto location has deep ties to Florida Greyhound racing. Hey, and away they go for race number three. At least two of the men in the video are licensed in Florida and have raced dogs here. Based on uh, social media posts, Florida Greyhound breeders have been sending dogs to Kyoto for finishing for many years. Uh, there, there's very clearly a link to Florida and Florida racetracks. Florida's Department of Business and Professional Regulation, which oversees the Greyhound industry, confirmed they have opened an investigation into the Kyoto operation. It is against the law in Florida to race Greyhounds that have been trained using live jackrabbits. On March 4th, Paxson returned to the training facility. Only this time he saw something even more disturbing. He believed the man who was training dogs on this day was the former police chief of Kyoto, Jason Martin, who is now a Haskell County Deputy Sheriff. According to state records, he raises greyhounds and has been licensed to race dogs in several states, including Florida. And he does the same thing as with, you know, th that the other guys did. Drag the, drag the dogs off to the starting gate and he brings the rabbits out. The only difference was that, you know, he made sure none of his dogs were muzzled. They tore all of the rabbits apart alive. It's not a thing to them, it never has been. They grew up with it. It's what I call a culture of cruelty. So you, you've you never used live jackrabbits in your training? No. In an interview with CBS Miami, Jason Martin denied he has ever used jackrabbits to train his greyhounds. Well, here's the, here's the issue. I, I've been, I have video showing you on March 4th um, using live jackrabbits to train dogs. How do you respond to that? I mean, I've seen the video. I really don't care what you've seen. Well, I mean, if you can explain why you would use live jackrabbits in that way, maybe that would help. I don't have to explain anything. Do you want to offer any sort of defense? No, sir. I mean, the video is pretty horrific. Is there anything else you want to say? Nothing at all. Following the interview, Martin sent a text just to let you know, if you try this, you will ruin my life. I am two months from closing my farm anyway and getting out of the business. We denounce the practice of using live lures in training. Jim Gartland is the executive director for the National Greyhound Association. When we first contacted him, he denied anyone in the industry use live jackrabbits, calling it a myth spread by Gray 2K. Again, as far as the videos go, I haven't seen them. I haven't heard about them. Um, if they, they exist, then those people will have to be dealt with. Greyhound racing was once big business in Florida, with millions of dollars in purses awarded at tracks across the state. Those days are gone, but there is still money to be made by Greyhound owners and kennels. And for some, dogs trained with live jackrabbits have a distinct advantage over those who are not. In the end, the critics say, it's all about money. And we're back in action, back at the Palm Beach Kennel Club. There's Not the even the pandemic could stop Greyhound Racing. After briefly shutting down, the Palm Beach Kennel Club started racing again on May 1st. As they round the turn and hit for the wire, still the six with the lead, five up the inside, five, six, one. With two days of footage, Paxton packed up and left Kyoto. Back at the Boston offices of Gray 2K, they drafted a complaint outlining everything they found, including all of the video footage and on April 6th, sent it to both the United States Attorney in Eastern Oklahoma and the District Attorney for Haskell County. This is an industry that has been torturing animals for years, and now for the first time, we're able to show it. Christine Dorchak is the President and General Counsel for Gray 2K. 
our undercover footage shows that both federal and state laws against cruelty to animals is being violated by the greyhound racing industry, particularly the mutilation of rabbits that are being moved in interstate commerce. We are seeing actors from various states involved in this scheme. It's a terrible act. The federal law Dorchak is referring to is the PACT Act, which stands for Preventing Animal Cruelty and Torture. 40 years after the Geraldo Rivera segment on 2020, Congress for the first time made animal cruelty a federal crime. The bill was sponsored last year by two Florida congressmen, Sarasota Republican Vern Buchanan and Broward Democrat Ted Deutsch. Vern Buchanan and I pushed this legislation through because there was this hole that existed. This is a way to beef up uh, enforcement of and supplement enforcement of local laws by giving uh, federal authorities a, a role to play here. Uh, and to recognize that some cases of animal cruelty uh, are more than just a one-off. Sometimes it's, it's a larger group that's engaged in that and federal resources should be brought to bear. We sent Deutsch a clip of the live lure training in Oklahoma to get his reaction. I got, I got it, I got it. It's, um, I mean, it's horrific. There's no scenario where, where what I just watched um, should be tolerated. And there just isn't. It, it's, it doesn't, um, obviously for the rabbit, what they do to these dogs and all to what end? Do they then, do they then use these dogs for sport? Is the sport for them? It's not, it's, it's not, it's not sport. It's disgusting. It's just awful. It's really, really terrible. And a lot of people said when we worked on this legislation that it's just not the, it's not the most important issue there is in the world. And that's true. And Lord knows we know right now as we're battling this pandemic, that's, that's especially been made clear, but it still matters. And anyone who watches that, except I guess for the people who, um, who are responsible for that brutality uh, would be horrified. And that's, that's why it was necessary to do what we did. A spokesman for the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Eastern District of Oklahoma told CBS Miami he could neither confirm nor deny the existence of an investigation. Deutsch said he'll be watching to see if the U.S. Attorney's Office takes a close look at these allegations. I'm not a prosecutor. I'm a legislator. And, and we, we worked with law enforcement to write this law to give them the tools necessary uh, to enforce it and to stop animal cruelty. I hope that someone's taking a look at, at this law, and, and certainly I know, I'm sure there are laws in Oklahoma they ought to be looking at. In fact, Oklahoma does have a law against animal cruelty and a specific statute that makes live lure training illegal. It is considered a misdemeanor, punishable by up to a $250 fine. The district attorney for Haskell County, Oklahoma, did not respond to calls seeking comment. The facts in this case are clear. Uh, are, are federal authorities uh, going to use the new law or not? Are they going to hold these individuals accountable? As we were getting our story ready to air, we heard from Paxton that he had found another training facility, this one in Texas. The last time you and I talked, you had just wrapped up in Oklahoma. I'm now talking to you in Texas. Where are you in Texas? You know, there's a whole lot more targets uh, that Gray 2K is interested in. Paxson admits his experience in Oklahoma had a profound effect on him and made him want to widen the investigation. The passion that I think Gray 2K had for all of these years, suddenly I felt it. And I kind of was caught up with their level of passion and wanted to get right out here and get, get back to work. The site in Texas was harder because it was well hidden, requiring him to crawl and hide in bushes, not more than 25 feet from where the dogs were trained. It was quite nerve wracking. I just huddled down as low as I could to the ground. You know, I didn't even, I didn't want anybody to even see the whites of my eyes. In Texas, the dogs were all muzzled, so they couldn't tear the rabbits apart. But the muzzled dogs will try to pin them and then slam a paw on them and then try and hit them with their muzzles until people can run up to try to separate. This is animal cruelty. 
There's no question that this is cruel to animals. Gray 2K has reported the Texas facility to authorities, and they are waiting to see what, if any, action is taken. In the meantime, Paxson has his own message for those facilities that use live rabbits to train greyhounds. All of them need to think and understand that we're never going to let up. They will be held accountable. So the best thing they can do is give up.